the other item that we've been getting or other strategy we've been getting a ton of questions about um, and, and even more so than the questions when you sit down with a, an insurance buyer um, that this fits for and describe it, it gets them really excited so uh, you know really um, timely um, exciting program and that's the concept of collateral relief specifically insurance locked collateral um, and what that is when companies of a certain size enter into high deductible or self-insured retention sir or other loss sensitive uh, type structures the carrier that's you know promising to pay their claims um, is often requiring collateral so they want you know for example you know insured goes from you know, a fully insured first dollar policy to a million dollar deductible, you know, the carrier who's issuing that policy could easily be coming in and, you know, saying, hey, we need a million dollars, a million five, whatever the projected losses are, we need that in collateral. And that collateral is often held in the form of a letter of credit or sometimes maybe cash funds withheld, but more often a letter of credit. And then so what does that do? Well, that ties up their revolver or their credit line or their cash at their bank, because for the bank to go out and issue this letter of credit, they want to be secure. So, you know, again, it's it's reduction of credit lines or reduction of available cash. And so, you know, one year that can be, you know, a hurdle, but then each year there's new collateral. So you get this concept of stacking collateral year over year, new collateral for the new underwriting year. And it really puts a burden on the balance sheet where you have this, you know, you just have this big amount of capital that's tied up, you know, sure it's an asset, but it's restricted. You can't use it for anything else. Um, and you often don't get that released until many years down the road after all the losses have expired and, uh, you know, the program's kind of, kind of gone away. Um, so, um, in what is an otherwise great strategy, you know, high deductible captives, uh, self-insured retentions works out great, except for this, you know, this, this kind of one ugly, uh, you know, tough piece of it. And so what the, um, you know, what this solution does is comes in and provides financing that enables the insured company to have all of that collateral, all of that tied up cash and letters of credit released back to them to utilize in their in their business. Um, so the group that provides this financing, they you know they underwrite the business similar to the way a carrier would, um, you know, looking at loss history, credit history, um, you know, financials, things of that nature, and then for for a fee will come in and step in in the place of the insured and put their collateral in the place of the insured collateral. And that's, you know, that's the mechanism by which everything gets freed up. Um, so uh, super attractive proposition. Um, and, you know, it couldn't be more timely too. I mean, the cost of funds, uh, of having funds, you know, capital unavailable to you that you're, you know, that you're paying for, um, you know, is just more and more painful um, for, for businesses these days. So um, obviously this is another concept that sounds great. Uh, and then the questions we get, you know, are the ones that we've got here, um, you know, submitted by the group typically, um, you know, first is, it sounds great. How long does it take? You know, you say underwriting process, uh, people start to think about months and months and months of um, due diligence, um, and in our experience, uh, a lot of it depends on how fast we get data back or the you know data submitted over to the um, you know credit underwriters, if you will. But we're typically seeing you know six to eight week turnaround time on that. Um, so not uh, you know nothing too onerous. Um, and we can get you know once we get information over and get feedback uh, you know back to them in a in a you know reasonable amount of time. So um, and the nice thing about that is. You know, not just the speed, but then also the timing. This is something that can be done at any time. It's not contingent upon a renewal date. So, you know, for everybody, you know, maybe you're grinding your one ones uh, or your seven ones. And, you know, the notion of putting something like this on top of it, uh, you know, could be a little tough. You can do this off cycle. Um, and, you know, a lot of people I know are using it as a, as a wedge, if you will, to, you know, start those off cycle discussions, um, you know, about, hey, as, you know, have your incumbent brokers, uh, you know, shared this information with you? 
Um, and if the answer is no, people are using that to, uh, you know, get in there and establish relationships and then, you know, establish a beachhead with the, you know, the insurance buyers within the client. So um, uh, the other question we get a lot of inquiries around is, you know, well, how big does it have to be? What's the, you know, what's the critical mass uh, to play ball here? Um, you know, certainly the larger the batch of collateral, um, you know, the more attractive it's going to be, or perhaps the more meaningful. Um, but uh, they can do anything, you know, from the hundreds of thousands of dollars up to the, you know, multiple, you know, multiple millions of dollars. Uh, I think, you know, average, you know, average, uh, you know, pool they're looking at is in the, you know, seven to eight million of, of collateral range. But you know, certainly much larger, and they can go smaller. So pretty, pretty flexible there. Um, and from what I've seen, you know, I'm sure. You know, there's exceptions to every every rule, but um, you know most of what they put in place it appears to satisfy all the requirements of the different banks. So that's the you know it's one of the other questions that that pop up is like, well, how do I know this will work with my bank? Um, and you know, they wording wise, you know, Evergreen letter of credit wording wise, from a legal standpoint, um, you know, again, exceptions will always pop up, but they the process seems to be pretty buttoned up there. Um, and then, uh, you know, the other question, just like any insurance product, finance products, well, what does it cost? Um, this is another area where I'd say I get points for you know, creativity or, or maybe know-how. Um, there's not a fixed fee. There's not a flat rate. What, um, you know, what these guys specialize in is understanding insurance finance. And, you know, so in the different deals that we've looked at, what I see them doing is, you know, just trying to make it work. You know, we got into the captive business because, you know, we were a small brokerage or a small consulting shop. And so it was difficult to compete with, you know, it's difficult to compete with the big boys. So we started leveraging captives um, as a way to make deals work, to make, you know, insurance programs work better for the client and, you know, and, and get, uh, you know, get new clients that way because it wasn't going to happen, you know, just competing on, you know, price or product or whatever. Um, and so that was kind of what I appreciated about these guys is it's, you know, they're looking at the cost structure that the client is currently, you know, stuck in and saying, all right, how do we make this a win-win for everybody? All right. We want the client to benefit accessing their capital, paying a reasonable you know premium for that, but, you know, um, you know, kind of having it work for work for them too. Um, you know, again, sort of creating that that win win. Um, and again, that's their underwriters understanding. You know, what uh, being able to dig in and understand what the existing cost structure for for the client is, and just say, hey, if this is something we want to do, we're going to price it in a way that that it works for everybody. So, um, yeah, exciting stuff there. Again, I, I I like that as a. You know, we've got a lot of broker partners coming in. You know leveraging that concept to get in there, um, you know, looking at, you know, then sliding in a, you know, a captive there to, you know, potentially fund the deductibles, address the SIRs. Um, and it's a, it's a nice, good holistic strategy. 